Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to Mark Regev, the Israeli government spokesman. And this is a tragedy. Uh, obviously, you see pictures like this and you can't help but be moved. Israel does not want to see any civilian casualties in our operation, not one. And of course, these deaths are indeed tragic. It's not yet clear to us exactly what happened in this location. There are a number of different explanations, but we'll get to the bottom of it. But you accept Israel could have been responsible for these deaths? I, I, I accept that it could have been Israeli fire. It's not clear. Uh, at this stage, uh, there were UN reports saying that Hamas was shooting rockets that were landing in the Beit Hanun area. So we can't exclude that possibility that it was Hamas rocket fire. It could also have been our fire uh, because uh, our forces were receiving fire from that area, from the immediate vicinity of the hospital. And it's possible that if our forces returned fire to that, uh, that it could have been our fire as well. But we have to investigate exactly what happened. You had the precise coordinates of that shelter. A UN spokesman tonight has said over the course of the day, the UN tried to coordinate a window with the Israeli army for civilians to leave. It was never granted. Do you accept that? No, I do not. We accepted that there be a humanitarian corridor to allow people to leave between 10 a.m. local time and 2 in the afternoon. We accepted that. So why our didn't the army get that, that Hamas... right? No, no, but the, our information is that actually the Hamas terrorists acted to prevent people to leave, which actually is consistent with a consistent pattern of behavior that we've seen in other places like Sergio, where we've requested people to leave because there's going to be a combat zone. We don't want to see innocent civilians Just to caught clarify, up in crossfire. Did you Hamas know that that building had not stay. been evacuated? Did you know it had not been evacuated? At the time, I don't know exactly what we knew, a difficult combat situation when our people were receiving fire. We'd been calling for three days for civilians to vacate that facility because that facility was being abused by terrorists who were shooting from that facility on, on our people. Let's Did be clear, the UN... Did you find out whether there were still children no. in that building before you fired? First of all, we're not clear. It's our fire. I mean, you're, you're jumping ahead of, uh, of what but the reality is. Let's wait and see what exactly happened. you issued a warning to evacuate happened. the building. Presumably, you issued Correct. a warning because you were going to fire on the building. Did you check whether it had been evacuated? Let's be clear here. We don't know exactly what happened. I don't know exactly what happened, and neither do you. So one has to be a bit more judicious before uh, uh, making that sort of assumption. Can I say the following, though, if you'll allow me, please? There are two examples, not that Israel says so. There are two examples of UN facilities being used by Hamas to store munitions for their terrorist war machine to fire their rockets into Israel. The UN Secretary General himself released a statement, and I can quote if you'll allow me. He said specifically that those doing so are endangering the lives of innocent civilians. If Hamas is turning UN schools into uh, uh, areas where it conducts its yeah. war machine, its terror war machine against Israel. And the UN also the UN Secretary said General over the course of the day, primary the UN responsibility rests with those terrorists. We don't want to see any fighting around UN facilities. Unfortunately, the terrorists have forced that fight upon us. OK, the UN told us that it tried to coordinate a window with the Israeli army for civilians to leave, and that was never granted. Now, either the Israeli army is not speaking to the government or else you're calling him a liar. Which is it? Well, first of all, let's be fair. In a combat situation, there are also reality is very difficult. Anyone in the army can tell you that. Anyone who's seen combat can tell you that. My information is that Israel agreed to a four-hour period for a humanitarian corridor, and that that was disrupted by the Hamas terrorists themselves, who didn't want to let the, the terrorists so leave. So you knew there were children in that And that is a consistent that pattern. Building. That is a consistent pattern of behavior by the terrorists who deliberately want to leave civilians to Mark protect Reagan, their you military knew machine there as were human children shields. inside that building. I don't know that. I don't know that, and you don't know that. I'm sorry. That's not correct. You knew that that was being used as a shelter by people fleeing the fighting in northern Gaza. You knew there were women and children who had come there to and seek we, shelter. We've been asking people to leave. And you we've knew been that they hadn't been able to leave that building. Once again, you are making presumptions based on information that you have or have not or what you're suggesting that information you have we don't know that for a fact but you said you were going to hit it you hit it you killed them you knew there were children in that building 
Sorry, how do you know? The UN itself reported that there was Hamas rocket fire falling in Beit Hanun. How do you know it was Israel? I mean, I'm not excluding the possibility, but it's a difficult combat situation and you have all the answers. If after the fog of war has passed, this does turn out to be the fault of Israel, will you pause? Will you reset your rules of engagement tonight? Our rules of engagement are very clear. One does not target civilians. One does not target civilian infrastructure. That is clear, and we hold ourselves to the higher standards. But that's not working, is it? If it's not designed to hurt civilians, your strategy is manifestly not working. We are trying to be as surgical as humanly possible in a very difficult combat environment. But I'd ask you, if you say we cannot return fire, that it is forbidden for Israel to return fire because Hamas has adopted these tactics, you're saying that Israel has no right to defend itself in the face of these hundreds, thousands of rockets fired at our people. Now, we are trying to be as surgical as is humanly possible in that difficult combat situation. But don't deny my country the right to defend itself from those terrorists you who are shooting rockets indiscriminately at our cities. a defence system. It's called the Iron Dome. It stops you for the most part, being hit. They don't, and they're paying the price with their dead children. No, Hamas is responsible for the Israeli casualties and for the Palestinian casualties, because Hamas said no to a ceasefire a week ago, a ceasefire proposed by Egypt and supported by the UN and the Arab League. Why is this conflict persisting? Because Hamas refuses to accept an Arab League ceasefire proposal. Mark Regev, thank you very much. Thank you.